Chappie's Crypto here with another special edition for my end of week summary for how I'm going on my trading journals. Uh, I've rebranded or relabeled this week, week five, because I did actually start on a Friday and the start of my trading journals um, and I didn't really call it the first week. So just to get the, the sync right, I'm renaming this week, week five. And so this is my weekly progress for the upcoming or for the previous week that's just finished. Um, so we're gonna, I'll, and I'll finish off this video with a bit of a summary of the session from last night. So just to recap, these are my goals to look to save a $10,000 initial balance to fund my trading account. And once I've got to that level, hopefully I've achieved the other two goals I've set as well. And then we can get started with some real life cash as well. Give some background and history. I have been trading for about 18 months. Start off with the cryptocurrencies. Learned lots of lessons through that time. And unfortunately I went backwards with my account. I took some time out about two or three months ago or three or four months ago now. And I discovered the ICT or Inner Circle Trader mentorship series on YouTube and I've watched all of those and I'm just going through and rewatching them again and using trying to apply his strategies to trading futures and my other goal is to try and double my demo account. So I've set up a demo account on TradeOf8 with a $10,000 starting balance and my goal is to try and double that. If I can achieve all the three of those goals I'll be pretty keen and I'm feeling like I'm pretty prepared to get into the market with real cash. This is how I'm going with my starting balance. So I have real cash so I've, I've added some more to the account this week. So we're up to a total of $2,463 American dollars and still you know, effectively 75% of the way to go. Uh, but feeling pretty happy about that. So just keep on grinding away at saving some cash. And that's my balance update. In regards to watching the ICT mentorship series, I've been going pretty hard last weekend particularly and, and, and re-watched quite a few of those episodes. 17 episodes down the second time through and 23 to go. What I may do with this series as well, I've been considering going back to start again and just doing my own summary of each video, maybe just doing a summarized video of, of the whole video just to really embed the, the learning because I'm still struggling a little bit, which I'll go into in a minute when I review my session from last night. So that was the that's how I'm going with that goal. So happy with how I'm going and keep on putting time aside to watch those. My results for this week has a red week unfortunately. I um, took two pretty pretty tough nights, just over traded quite too much unfortunately and just read the market wrong or just over traded so ultimately down $996 for the week. Uh, it is the way it goes. 31 trades, probably once again trading too much and that's just a summary of my results for the week. 35% profitable trades, definitely not great and $100 in fees and commissions on the demo account. This is how I'm going with my doubling my demo account. I actually, the, the account balance has gone backwards a little bit this week, but still on track. Definitely, definitely traveling pretty well uh, overall. So I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy to see profitable results over the whole time I've been logging my trading journal process. I do, I am trading the live market. So even though I'm using a demo account, I'm not doing anything retrospectively. So I am waking up in the middle of the night, watching the markets and placing trades on the live market with a demo account, just to make sure I'm mimicking as close to the real life as possible. Uh, here's my week to week summary of each you know, profit or loss for the week. And so you'll see there in week one, bit of a tough start to the, to the whole session. I, I took some hits that very first session on the first Friday night. Week two is an absolute cracking week and week three and four are also really good weeks as well with almost $1,500 in profit each week. And this last week was just under $1,000 loss. Um, and this is the account balance just in a different form. You'll see there a bit of a bump down on that first week and then it's just been climbing and then just this last week it took a bit of a bump. So overall, generally, you know, we're going on a general upwards trajectory, so pretty happy with how that's traveling. This is the summary of, of each of these goals and I think this is a really good way for me anyway to visualize how I'm traveling. So you can see the rewatching the mentorship series and the doubling the demo counter are very much in sync there. And I hope to see that continue on, particularly the doubling of the demo account. Um, and the savings, um, I think the savings the month or saving the money is going to take me the longest amount of time. So maybe in two to three months, I will have 10 grand saved. So I'm you know, trying to put as much as well as I can. Um, I did consider not putting anything into cryptocurrency over the last two weeks, but I've been doing that for a while now. I didn't want to mess with my system. I also am a massive Tesla fanboy. I apologize for anyone that's not into Tesla, but I am. Um, and I to put a little bit of money into Tesla each fortnight as well. I you know, buy you know, a portion of a share each fortnight and just slowly building up my holdings of Tesla as well. 
This is the link to the Inner Circle Trader or the ICT Mentorship Series which is on YouTube. If you go along to that, you'll see there on the third playlist there, the 2022 ICT Mentorship Series. That's the series of videos that I'm basing all of my training off at the moment. So I'm really trying to learn ICT's methods and, and trading system and I'm applying that to this demo account. So everything I'm learning, particularly at the moment, I've done plenty of other courses before and I've obviously got some prior knowledge. So some of that sometimes comes through, but I, I'm very much trying my best to try and understand and apply his methods and last but not least that's just a recap of the goals as well uh, so that's my weekly progress general overall pretty happy it's a bit frustrating i had a down week um, but it is it is the cost of doing business when you're trading and that's where i'm at with my goals uh, second part of this video i'll do a review of my training session last night to see where where things went wrong and what i could learn from that i hope you enjoyed that little weekly progress update and if you stay tuned you'll see my weekly review uh, or my review of last night's session talk soon Welcome back to the second second section of this video. This is my review of my night session from last night, which was the night of the 12th of August on Friday and morning of the 13th of August Australian time. And so this is the Friday session of the market. So I got chopped up last night, unfortunately. Another tough loss, so $814 down for that session. Gross profit or well, loss of 778, but once you include the, the fees and commissions, um, took a hit of 814. I very much over traded and you'll see when I've just I'm actually really help I'm really glad I do these reviews because it does allow me to really reflect on what I'm doing wrong and what I can learn so I hopefully can um, not make as many mistakes going forward so that's my trade evade account it's just the demo account that I've got there and just shows you the, the review it goes through all the different trades you've taken as well what I've done on trading view this is the chart where I've just marked out all the trades I'll just go up to a 15 minute chart for a moment just to have a look to see what my bias was when the market was coming to an open looks like I've deleted my um, line for the um, session open so I'll just I'll just mark that on here it'll be there in a second uh, there's midnight just there and so line that up to midnight and draw it out to the end of the session. I do that before the market opens. So if you can imagine um, about this time of the night, I'm actually drawing this line on the chart. It gives me a bit of an anchor point. If you've watched the ICT series, um, he talks about the importance of price at midnight and the price at market open at 8.30, which are these. So um, I may look to do something here as well, just mark that out. Well, the other thing I do is I will actually typically put a trend line I'll mark out that level as well. I use the horizontal line tool, uh, which would be, if I look at the price before this market open, I would have marked off this level there. And I've obviously got that, which just happens to be coinciding with the um, price at midnight. So it's an interesting point to, to note is as well. Now I had actually marked off this level from a previous session where if you go back quite a few weeks, you'll see the price had actually hit a double top had come up this and a few days later did this and then fell away. We'd be trading down here. The price has been slowly grinding its way back up to here. So this, this level here matches, it's the top of the previous quite a few weeks ago. So I'd marked that on the chart and we've also got a fair value gap up here. And if we scroll back right to the um, one hour, let's even go to the daily. You'll actually notice when you do this, that, if you use the Fibonacci tool here on this whole range, price has been, this is the midway point, so price has been trading down here in the discounted area in this range for quite some time. And we've just bumped up into um, the premium. So my, my I suppose my long-term bias is, I, and we've got this fair value gap on the daily chart as well. So my daily bias was that we're heading this direction. I thought we may come down and take this, but um, you'll actually notice this, this here, so it's, the price has bounced off that, which I noted when I was looking at the daily setup. So my daily bias was long. Um, I thought we were we're headed back up towards this this level. See these um, double tops here and that double top there, as well as this fair value gap. So this is definitely where I think price has been drawn to. So we're headed that direction generally. So that was my bias I had in the back of my head. Now you'd think if you had that bias, you would actually use that to inform your trading. And I did take a trade with that bias in mind. Um, and one of the things that I'm reflecting on and and maybe I just need to hold myself accountable to this is once once I've got that long bias in play, um, rather than just take all these little tiny trades, maybe I just need to look for one or two good trades um, that line up with that bias. And, and you'll actually see what happened here. The price just ripped um, in the right direction, but it was just a very slow grind all the way through the night. Interestingly, if you're on the 15 minute chart, what you'll notice here that I've actually marked out on the equities markets opens, just so we can note that on the chart as well. 
but on the 15 minute chart you'll see this 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 is almost a textbook ICT 15 minutes so we've got we're arranged trading here we've got this little bust out so nice strong candle to break the market structure this is a 15 minute candle remember or 15 minute chart we've got this nice uh, whip down here at market open and there's your fair value gap in theory you take a nice long position here um, if you don't have a big account, so I, I don't have a massive account, so you could only really probably afford to take one or two contracts here on the micro e mini, which is what I trade and place a stop down at this level. Um, that there would have been an absolute ideal setup because you could have set your target here and it's just textbook trade. It just played out like, I mean, I, you're not going to see a better setup than that, particularly in the 15 minute. It played almost to, <laughs> you couldn't have predicted that. Now, if you did actually take that trade and you maybe took four or five um, contracts you could have set this as a target so this would have been a nice easy money for jam so you place your long there and you place your first target here so take a partial off maybe take off half your half your position at that point which um, would have happened fairly quickly well you know well in, in the middle of that morning session um, but if you had the wherewithal to hold that out and maybe you're a bit of a longer trader rather than in and out type of trader you could have just held on to that and look at that just textbook trade uh, ICT trade there on the 15 minutes so interesting to note that um, however if you're a crazy person and like to be in and out like I tend to be doing as you go down the time frames you'll see so I do like to hang out in the one minute chart on the time frame so as I went down my very first trade mind you I actually took on the three minute time frame so you'll see the, what the logic I had here was on retrospect I actually just I should have stuck on retrospect it's easy to say that in retrospect of course if I'd stuck with my long bias, I would have actually grabbed a couple of really nice trades here. However, um, I just I was flip-flopping. Um, so my very first trade was I took a sell here of three contracts. Why did I take a sell? Uh, well, in my head, we had hit the top of this range. Price had done a market structure, big market structure shift here, down here. Price had come up here and there's a fair value gap. Fair call, definitely short. And that's my, my stop loss and I stopped out. So, you know, I suppose, that's against my daily buy stop process, but it still met my criteria of that short time trade. Yeah, it got stopped out, yeah, it just happens. Why did I take this next trade? Um, on When I look back here and reflect on it, I don't know, it's the honest truth. So that's a dud trade. Um, I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. And it's one of those things, it's really interesting to reflect on your emotions when you are, and this is the importance of obviously the benefit of trading uh, with, with a demo account, with the live markets, you, you, you do feel all the emotions of going in and out. So I took this trade as a, as a short or a sell and the market moved against me. I had my stop just here. Um, I'm getting, I'm, I'm trying to be very disciplined about once I place my stop not to move it. So I placed my stop there. Yeah, at one point here, I thought I might have I called this one well because it started going, I, you know, price came up here. I just held on. I said, you know what? I've placed my stop. It met my criteria, even though that was a silly trade because it didn't really meet my criteria. I got stopped out. So that, um, another great trade there. And I think on that one, I lost $167. This first one was 115 that one there was 167 and and I kept on going. So what did I do next? Uh, once again, when I look back at this, let's go down to the one minute chart. Actually, you'll probably see on that one minute chart, actually, that trade, I, that first trade I talked about, it'll be a bit easier to see my logic. Um, and this is the logic here. You know, actually, this is what it was, you can see here. So the thing on the reflection on this particular trade is the price had actually come up. I had come back down here and for me, this is a nice strong candle market structure break. I'm thinking that we've probably hit a bit of a top here. Big fair value gap. <clears throat> There's one up here as well. So I took my, I placed my sell order there and went against me. I did place it, my stop was here. And you know, in theory, I could have added to that there. And I suppose if you were gonna take these little tiny trays, there's merit to say, yeah, you could add it there if your stop's up here. And once you've broken this, to take part of that trade out and maybe move your stop. So there's there's definitely a trade there. You could have made money off that trade. Um, I didn't, unfortunately, if I'm gonna do this type of trading, I think you need to be prepared to be in and out much more quickly. Um, however, once I held out there, I got stopped out and, and lost 167 on that trade. So it is what it is. And this time, what did I do on this next trade? So there's the first two trades I'm down at the moment. So I'm, I'm not in a great position after those first couple of trades. So the next trade, I decided to change my logic here. And why did I do that? Well, price has done this. We've got this market structure shift. I don't really have a super strong individual candle. This was a good candle um, and it created this fair value gap. So there was definitely, there's a possibility of, I could have taken a, 
I am along at this point. I missed it. So I was keeping my eye on here and there's another Fair Valley Gap formed, came down, grabbed that. So I took a sh uh, long at that place and I actually placed my stop loss there. Unfortunately, came down, stopped me out and the price kept on going. So at that point, I was fairly happy with the, with the fact that I'd been stopped out because obviously it went against me. Um, another another losing trade there, so not a great night so far. I'm down another $184, and then this is the mother of all losing trades. Um, just too expensive. I, I've had a few nights where I've been adding to my positions as I as the session goes on. I just add, you know, take bigger and bigger positions. It's, it's it has worked out okay. It's sort of played against me last night though. So this time though, I decided, and this is just I was I was reading into market unfortunately. So here, when you see the prices coming down here, I've convinced myself I've got another market sh structure shift. I'm looking for the comeback to a fair value gap. We've got a tiny winning fair value gap here. I took eight contracts short. Um, initially, I felt pretty good. I had my stop loss placed here. Now, this was a big stop loss. Um, so in retrospect, I probably should have stuck with only two or three contracts maximum. Would have taken much less of a hit. However, I got stopped out. It just, it just didn't break. So I'm thinking, we're going to do this and head back down this way. But it didn't. Once again, this is not with my daily bias, so silly, just, I've got to get better at just having faith in my daily bias. However, finally I decided, you know what, <laughs> I've just totally misread this whole market, let's just stick to your daily bias, and we saw the price do this. So nice move, strong move up, it broke this market structure, so I, uh, I said, you know, I think this is the move, let's go in heavy here, I'm risking a fair chunk, I'm already up in a reasonable amount for the week. This is, you know, obviously bad trading ultimately because I've just decided to risk a fair chunk. Took 10 contracts long at this point. These are the micro e-mini NASDAQ, of course. So 10 contracts there. So we've got this market structure shift. And for me, this is broken strong through this. And we got a fair value gap. This there, and I placed 10 contracts. I actually had my stop down at this sort of level. Uh, down here, I actually, I didn't actually place a stop initially. I was just keeping an eye on it. And if it'd come down here, I would just cut the trade. However, it did retrace a little bit, so I was, you know, feeling a little bit uncomfortable and then it started to move in the right direction. Once we got up to here, um, I took three partials out at that point. There's about $80 um, profit just there, just to lock a bit of profit in. Um, it kept on moving up, which is great. Um, I took another partial there of three contracts at $205 profit for that part of that. Um, and the, the move started to move against me. I was paying attention to this and I just I made the decision in my head if it breaks back under this level it's just to cut the trade, which I did do. On retrospect though, um, this probably would have been a better point to keep an eye on of, of potentially if it moves all the way back down to this level then you definitely need to cut it. Um, because as you can see, if you zoom right back out what happened, I this is well and truly very late for me. This is getting to about 1.30 in the morning in Australian time. So by that point, I'm pretty tired and this is coming to the lunch session. So usually I'm well and truly done by this time. However, when you zoom right out and have a look what the market did and remembering this was my ultimate target, uh, price went up and touched it beautifully. So yeah, there it is. No use crying over spilt milk. However, the, the, that last trade did definitely go to where I thought it might go and it would have locked in a fairly substantial profit if I'd let that ride. I wouldn't have let it ride because I can't control myself, unfortunately, yet. I'm still, still trying to control my emotions, but it's nice to see the logic of the daily bias that I'd been picking up. It definitely played out the way I thought it would. So there you go. Um, when I do look back on this, there's definitely a better trade. And there's one particular trade that I, as I looked at this, um, that would have been better. So if I've got the daily bias in my head of going along, a really good setup here was this. We've got this, price breaks the market structure here. Nice big push down, we've got a big fair value gap there. That was, this there is where I should have taken a really strong long and put my stop there. Done that, done that. It's this, I could have just, I would have worn a bit of heat here, but the price just moved, well, that's one trade. So that one trade there was the ticket, that was the money move and unfortunately um, I missed it and I just was getting too chaotic and trying to get in and out too quickly. So uh, definitely learning a lesson from that and obviously that move there, you've got a really nice opportunity to take some partials, um, you know, take some more partials up to this point and away you go. Get the point, there you go. That's. Um, that's my review of last night's session. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. Um, continue to live and learn. Uh, I look forward to getting back into the markets again next week. I'll probably do some more reviews of some more ICT videos over the weekend. And until next time, it's Chappie's Crypto. I hope you're enjoying everything out there in the big world of trading. If you've got family and friends, enjoy the weekend. And until next time, bye for now.